Here we're going to look at uh, ways to sketch a graph of the original function when you're given information about the first and second derivative. Uh, so we're we'll look at a few examples of this. <coughs> uh, first, the, this is a quick recap of how derivatives indicate the shape of your function. Um, all of these, the first three are your first derivative, uh, numbers four through six are your second derivative. And uh, you need to remember that when the derivative is positive, your function increases. When it's negative, the function decreases. When the second derivative is positive, you're concave up. Second derivative negative, function is concave down. And then when they are zero, the derivative is zero, could be a max or a min. We don't know. We have to figure it out. Uh, and when the second derivative is zero, you might have an inflection point. So those are the, the key things about your first and second derivatives that you need to know in order to do this. So let's look at an example here. <coughs> All right, let's see. We have this information, and as I look at this, I'm going to draw. Let's see, is all that grouped together? Yeah, it is. Okay. Um, this first piece, it says the derivative is positive. If the derivative is positive, that means your function is increasing. The derivative is negative means your function is decreasing. Second derivative positive means f is concave up. Second derivative negative <coughs> means f is concave down. And then I give you some ordered pairs. This is simply f of negative 2 is 3, which means we are at the point negative 2, 3. f of 2 is negative 2, so we're at the point 2, negative 2. And that's actually the easiest place to start. If you're ever given ordered pairs, those are pretty easy to graph. So I'm going to go ahead and graph negative 2, 1, 2, 3, and I'll plot a point there. And f of positive 2 is negative 2. And so I'll plot a point there. I know I need to hit those two points. And then I'm going to get <coughs> make sure I hit the intervals of increase and concavity and decrease and all that mess. Uh, let's see. <coughs> I know my function will increase. My function increases to the left of negative 2. So here's negative 2. Everywhere to the left of that, my function will be increasing. And then also when x is greater than positive 2. So that's negative 2 at positive 2 and onward. My function is also increasing there. My function decreases between negative 2 and 2. So between these two, my function will be going down. So right now, my general shape is up, then down, then up. And I know I need to hit those two points. And then the concavity, f double prime is positive when x is greater than 0. So when x is greater than 0, my function is concave up, which is that shape. And then f double prime is less than 0 when x is less than 0, so to the left of the y-axis, my function will be concave down, meaning we're bending down. And that's all of the information I have, and then we'll use that to sketch the graph. And see, I know I start, my function starts by increasing, then decreasing, then increasing. And what I will usually do is I'm going to kind of put the concavity on, the, uh, on hold for just a minute, and I'm going to take care of the increase and decrease part. So I will increase, then I need to decrease to this point, Ooh. decrease to this point, and then we need to go back to increasing. And so that's what I have right now. So I take care of the intervals of increase and decrease. Then I'll look at my concavity and see if I satisfied my concavity. Let's see, I need to be concave down on the left side of the y-axis, and I am concave down and I need to be concave up on the right side. And I think I may have missed that point right here because it looks like right here I'm still concave down. So now I'm going to go back and I'm actually going to have to redraw this. I wasn't expecting this. So let me undo this. And I'm going to make sure that when I get to the y-axis, I change from concave down to concave up. So I need to increase. I'm concave down. And then when I get to the y-axis, I'm concave down. But at that point, I need to flip to concave up. So now I'm going to flip to concave up, hitting that point. And this, I'm pretty happy with that graph. So there's my f of negative 2. Here's my f of 2. And this right here is an inflection point. When the graph changes concavity, that's an inflection point. Didn't, didn't mention anything about the inflection point right here. 
but uh, anytime your graph changes from one concavity to the other, that is an inflection point. Good, 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 good. All right, let's try another one. Let's see, um, f prime is greater than zero. If f prime is greater than zero, that means your function is increasing. f prime is greater, ooh, f prime is still greater than zero. That's interesting. That means my function is still increasing. Something's not right there. Hold on just a minute. All right, here we go. Yeah, that was a typo. I meant for that f prime to be less than zero. So my function's actually going to be decreasing right here. So f prime positive to the left of one, my function is increasing, and then my function will be decreasing after one. f prime of one is undefined. Now think about when a derivative is undefined. That means we are looking either at a cusp, a discontinuity. Those are the two most um, most likely scenarios. Well, that's a big word. Did I spell that right? Discontinuity. Or it could be a vertical tangent. That's rare, but it could be a vertical tangent. All right. Uh, F double prime is greater than zero, which means my function is concave up everywhere except at one. And then I gave you an ordered pair. F of one is four. So I'm going to go ahead and plot the point one four. Okay, so f of 1 is 4. My function needs to increase to the left of 1 and decrease after 1. So I'm going to make a little note to the left of 1. My function needs to be increasing because the derivative was positive. When x is bigger than 1, my derivative was, is negative, which means my function is going to decrease. So I'm going up, and then I'm going down. Up, then I'm going down. Then my concavity, my function is concave up everywhere except, so I'm concave up, I'm mean, concave up everywhere except at this point right here because that is your, uh, your cusp more than likely. Um, so I need to increase then decrease, so I need to go up then down while being concave up on both sides. The way we're going to accomplish that is we're going to increase, concave up, and then we're going to decrease while being concave up. And that satisfies the graph. Now what you don't want to do is make it like a W. You don't want to be concave up like this because we've said that my function needs to be increasing all of this space left of negative 1. So we don't need any decreasing spots. So this graph is going to look like this. Are we good? Are we good? Are we good? All right. One more. Okay, let's see. F prime is equal to zero. Okay, f prime equal, oh, what's going on there? Let's see, oh yeah, I remember this now. Let's move that over. All right, okay, if f prime equals zero, that means the slope of f is zero. Means you're looking at a horizontal segment um, everywhere left of negative one. f prime is positive, that means my function increases. My function is increasing f prime is negative, less than zero. That means my function is decreasing. f double prime is negative. For all x is greater than one, if f double prime is negative, that means my function is concave down. And then I gave you two ordered pairs to hit. So f of negative one is one. So negative one, one. I'll hit that point. f of two is three. So let's go over one, two, up two, three. So I need to hit those two points and I need to satisfy all of this. Uh, the easiest part is going to be this first piece. My slope is zero everywhere to the left of negative one. So when I'm graphing this, my slope is zero everywhere to the left of negative one. We have a horizontal segment to the left of negative one. Right? And then I hit that point. Good, good. Good, good. Good, good. And then I need to look and see my function will increase, the slopes are positive, between negative 1 and 2. So my function will go up between negative 1 and 2. Then my function will go down after 2. My function goes up, then it goes down. And my function is concave down everywhere after negative 1. So from negative 1 on to infinity, my function needs to be concave down 
or look like a frowny face. So we need to increase to that point, decrease afterwards while being concave down. That's not going to be too difficult, I don't think. Let me erase that thinking right there. I need to increase and decrease. Okay, good, 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 good. And we actually have another point where the derivative fails to exist. We have a non-differentiable point right there. And I didn't mention that in here, but it, it, that does end up being true. So are we good there? Are we good there? Any questions? All right, that's it. Those are the three that I want to look at, and that's how you use your information from the first and second derivatives in order to get sketches. These are not exact graphs, but in order to get sketches of your original function. And there are some other possibilities. I mean, this is, this is one particular solution. You could have a discontinuity at, uh, at x equals 1 here. There's a lot of options that, that you could satisfy these conditions. Um, and yet our graphs could look different. So we'll talk uh, about that more de in more detail later. And hopefully this helps, under helps you understand how the first and second derivatives affects the shapes of your functions.